right. Hello everybody. This is a tutorial about getting cloth from Marvel's Designer 4 into Maya and making it look good and be ready for animation. Uh, Marvel's Designer 4 is a great program. You should try it out. It's um it's good for getting a uh, sort of good looking folds and good looking um, cloth and, and doing it in a way that's very natural because uh, um, in uh, in Marvel's Designer what you do is you cut out your cloth um, like you make a cloth piece and then you sew it on and uh, see it fall on there and then you can just sort of drape it and just make it, make it work for you and what's good about it is this is just how exactly how cloth would be made in the real world so um, you cut out a piece of cloth that had a pattern on it and then you'd sew it together and then um, in that way you would make sure that all your seams looked nice and that it you know it came together at the points that they need to and it followed the folds really nicely um, and so yeah the problem with Marvel's Designer is that the exported geo is kind of crazy it's um, mostly triangles which is probably really great for simulation but uh... not so great for animation uh, if you wanted to bring it into Maya's uh, FX and cloth setup you wouldn't really be able to do that nicely um, so you might be tempted to just sort of take this geo and just sort of export it into Marvelous Designer or sorry export it into ZBrush and just retopologize it there or uh, do it ju just a quick Z remesher but you might end up with some kind of messed up results. So this looks pretty good, but if you were trying to model this, for one thing, it's very high poly, which might not be an issue for you, but you might want to be able to change it, which might be difficult here because all of these edge loops are kind of all over the place. So like this one comes up at the back and goes around here. A lot of these stop and start in weird spots and curl around and uh, follow these sort of crook nooks and crannies and even if you did retopologize it regularly you might still end up with some kind of wonky looking UVs um, the seams might not all line up it might not be exactly the most beautiful thing and uh, if you had a very complicated texture that needed to look good you might have some problems like this seam here kind of does a weird little woo so not really what you want you would rather have these seams right here in this sort of UV setup. This is pretty much ideal, but um, there's not a really great way to to get the uh, modeling and the UVs to line up. So I'm going to go through my process. I've seen um, something like this process used before online, but I wanted to uh, put my own take on it. I sort of learned it through trial and error. Um, I tried the transfer attributes tool that didn't turn out looking very nice. It was kind of all over the place. Um, and a bunch of other ways, but this is the way that, that works the nicest and it's the fastest. So let's jump right into it. And by the way, this uh, this model that I made was based on a piece of concept art by Alex Braun. You should check him out. He's been making a bunch of these little uh, uh, guys here for RPG stuff, and I think they're really cool. This is the character that I modeled and based off of. And I added some of my own stuff to him. He doesn't look exactly the same, but I um, just wanted to give credit where credit was due. Um, it's a good, good illustrator. Good job. All right, so let's get into it. We're going to take the sweater. We're going to um, select it. We're going to do File, Export, Selected, OBJ. And we'll call it Sweater Draped. We want the version of it draped over the body. We'll hit Save. We'll go make sure that the gecko is not selected here, um, or whatever your mannequin is. Do single object, unwelded, thin, with uh, centimeters. What OK. And then we will go File, Export, oh, sorry. We will select it all again, right click, reset to 2D arrangement, like that. This is where we want it to be. And we'll do File, Export, OBJ selected. Do sweater UV'd unweld thin single object centimeter scale. Your scale might be different depending on what your model is, but um, that's the units I'm working in in Maya. So 
is how it will be. And we will import it into Maya. Uh, draped file import UV. There you go. We'll just go ahead and take these and assign just a regular Lambert to it. And now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to now we've got the template for our high poly mesh in both setups and since they are the same mesh with the same topology and the same um, yeah same mesh you can do a deform blend shape on them and now if you go to your blend shape here you can switch between the two da 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 yeah so that's that's good That's better. It's a little nicer because our uh, if we do it the other way, we get some shadows popping up in its 2D form, and it's a little bit distracting. So we're gonna do it the other direction. So now we got our UVs that look like this. They're huge. They're they're fine. You don't really need the UVs for this one. This is just the template that we will use to build our low poly mesh. And uh, from here, you can go in a, some various directions. You can either make a live surface, do a not that one can do a um, quad draw on it and just start putting these all together you know, and then just sort of make your mesh that way but um, just to save time I'm just going to retopologize it in ZBrush so I'm going to open up ZBrush really quickly take our UV topology um, flip it around it's on the other side and this is our high poly mesh Go to our sub tools, duplicate it just in case we ever want to go back, and then hide the other one. And then we will go to our geometry tab and go to Z Remesher. And we're going to put this down to something pretty low, like 0.75, I think works pretty well. Do a quick Z Remesh. It gave me an error because it's symmetrical, or it's not symmetrical, and my symmetry is on, so we'll just go to Transform, Activate Symmetry, turn it off. And we'll do our Z Remesh. There we go. Pretty low poly, looks pretty nice. We can just export this as UV sweater topo. And then in Maya, our student version of Maya, you can import in the retopoed mesh. There it is. And from here you could probably clean it up a little bit if you wanted to. There's not a you can take all of our uh, pieces here hide that for a second. Take all of our pieces here and merge them together. Delete our history. There we go. Boop, 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 boop. So now what you want to do is you want to go through and make sure that um, your edges and corners all line up because otherwise they might kind of fall off the, uh, the mesh and not line up nicely once we wrap it to where it needs to be. So we can go through and clean this up a little bit. Uh, we'll get, try to figure out how many edges we need. So this to this needs to line up with this to this because we want to be able to connect them afterwards. So we're just going to go display, heads up display, poly count, and then up here you might be able to see, I don't know, if I can, you can see on our edges here there's 10 selected and over here is 8 selected. So we're going to switch this over to the corner like that and we are going to add in a couple of edges. Just a couple edge loops. There we go. Now we got 10 here and 10 here. Perfect. So we'd want to do that for everything else. Um, for now we're just going to go with what we've got back to the way it was. Yeah, this is a problem here, so I'm just going to slide that over. There we go. There we go. So what you do is you would go through and, and make sure everything lined up like that. Um, it doesn't take too long, especially with your low poly mesh. Uh, you'd also probably want to go ahead and change some of the topology here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and make this some cape geometry because that's what looks nicer and 
animates better, so I'm just going to do quad draw and get some geo here. There we go. No, no, no. And this is a trial on the best of days, but with this, uh, with all this stuff going on in my scene, it ends up being a little bit slow sometimes. So I'll just go through and finish that up. Sort of relax a little bit. Oops, looks like I missed one. There we go. Make sure everything lines up. It's okay if it's a little bit clumpy. Just make sure the edges line up. Um, this is all you're going for here is your edge loops and making sure they they add up to each other. We can relax this one out so we don't have to deal with as much pinching later on. There we go. And you make sure that this edge lined up with this edge. You got three edge loops here. Uh, you make sure that these edges of the sleeves here line up with this plus this, which adds up to eight. And over here we've got nine. So we'll just take one right out of the middle. Let's move that out. Get the edges. this and make sure this topology isn't doesn't give us a headache later on and when you're done with this you can just take your your mesh here which you've got selected do a UV well you gotta clean it up first and then UV planar map specifically uh, with camera and keep image width height ratio on and that way it'll It'll be this is your UV mesh here. It's perfect. All right, so now we have our uh, our mesh that. Uh, did we do this yet? We got our blend shape here, and we got our mesh. So we'll turn that off, and we're also going to take the new low poly mesh here, select our high poly mesh, and then we will deform wrap. Actually, you know what we're also going to do before we do that? Um, we're going to put a smooth modifier on it so we can add divisions later if it if we decide we want to. If you made this very low poly mesh um, and you made it all kind of squared out the way it is, you can go to uh, mesh smooth and then just leave it at zero because you want to add that to the stack first. And then you can take this low poly mesh, high poly mesh, deform, wrap, and then I'm just going to go ahead and open you know, our animation editors, this shape editor, so I can just turn on this blend shape on and off whenever I want to. Hit one, and there we go. We have our low poly mesh onto our thing here. There we go. So these edges should line up. If we um, start just merging them together, they will add up to the number that we need them to. We just we're just merging merge vertices, merge to center. You can do find that in edit mesh, merge to center. And I'm just hitting G just to um, hit them all that we need. There we go. So you got your seam going right down the middle. We got our UVs. They look great. Um, the merge doesn't affect the UVs, so you get to keep your seam and you get to keep it all in one object. And then you get this sort of nice looking uh, setup going here, and you do it on the other side as well. And just go do do, merge to center, merge to center, I do that? yeah, merge to center, merge to center. I'm gonna leave it like that. And if it sort of doesn't line up quite nicely and once we're all done here 
what we can do is sort of take this object, duplicate it, so we got our non historyed objects to put this on, set it as our live surface, select the other object, go to our modeling tools, quad draw, just sort of relax it out a little bit. There you go. Um, and now at this point what you can also do is you can you can still go back and change that um, that smooth. So we got a lot of poly tweaks on here. So this might actually take a while to be able to do this. Uh, but hopefully we'll be able to keep all of our information on here um, from the high poly mesh. I'm just gonna find it. Uh, poly, poly tweak. Play tweak, surface shape, surface shape original. I would have thought it would be the top, but it's okay. There it is, smooth face. All right, now we can hit one. It might take a while, and there you go. We'll hide our, uh, our other mesh behind here that we used to quad draw it. And it gets a little angry because we uh, we did some stuff, but we didn't. We started merging before we did the smooth, um, and now it's sort of upset. But we still get all of the information from our uh, sort of um, draped cloth original piece, um, and then we can sort of change it up afterwards, sort of in post, and change how how thick we want the uh, how uh, dense we want the mesh afterwards. So this is a great way to get it done quickly and keep your, your edge loops looking nice and all of that. So um, yeah, that is my, that's my uh, tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something. Um, I hope this is really the best way to do it. And that you, But if it isn't, you guys can just send me a little comment or a message and I will uh, I'll check it out. Um, but yeah, this is the way that sort of most served me in the past, and uh, I hope it is useful to you guys. Thanks.